Bill and Ben were still cross with Gordon for telling them a story about fireless engines and claiming them as ghost engines. They still bowed to pay him back next time they met. One day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see them. Chuck and Oliver are going to the Great Western Railway for its anniversary and won't be back until next Monday, so I need you to work in their place. Yes, sir, said the twins, and set off to Napford Station. Bill and Ben worked hard along the Little Western, and they didn't play any tricks. Traditionally, the engines would tell scary ghost stories. This year was different. The engines were quiet and looking glum. Suddenly, James spoke up. How about the one with Jack Frost? interrupted Gordon. How do you know? Because that's the only scary story you tell every year. So I bet you're not interested about the Black Clock Monster then? asked Emily. No, huffed Gordon. Besides, that story is silly. No offense, Donald and Douglas. Ah, no worries. We never believe that story anyway. Say, Bill and Ben, said Edward. You weren't here last year or any year before that. So why don't you tell a ghost story? All right, then. This better be good, huffed Gordon. And so the twins began. A long time ago, there used to be an island far away from here, even farther than Misty Island. But who cares about that, right? The island was first founded in 1945 after the war ended. A railway was later built on it. Besides trains, the only motives to transportation were boats, cranes and helicopters. The boats were kind, calming and friendly. The cranes were, well, cranky and noisy. And the helicopters were... Wait, wait, wait a minute. What does this have to do with anything? Shut up, we're just getting started. Yeah. Anyway... As for the engines, they were like none other. They were built from plastic, or really cheap metal, which made them as light as a tidy plastic toy tray. If someone were to pick them up and throw them across the room into a brick wall, they easily could because they were so light. None of them had any side rods because they were too hard to make. Some of the engines had shadows around the eyes, which made them look like thugs. Some of them had their faces meshed into their bodies. And wipers for their eyes. These engines were so light, they could jump off the track and bounce onto the nearest tracks, despite still having points. One engine in particular had jets, allowing him to fly up in the air. Some of them had long robotic arms, which allowed them to use their wheels and buffers as hands. They also used their wheels to walk like legs. Some engines, called the robot trains, could go off the rails for five minutes after transforming into a robot. They had hands and legs. They looked terrifying. All of these engines could leave their rails and ride on the grass. Some steam engines bended their smoke boxes one way or another. Some engines had their couplings inside their buffer beams and would use them when they needed to. A few engines claimed to be from another country when they really weren't. The steam engines used their funnels as pockets without causing any clogging or blowing up, and sometimes their hands despite having wheels. The engines often sang songs during their trips. 
The rolling stock were able to move by themselves, but only for rolling stock that had faces. Physics did not exist on that island. The engines could operate without a driver or fire. They didn't even need coal or water. Some engines were even smaller than a narrow gauge engine. These engines would be called trainees. The engines also had eye cutter, which made them look like they were staring into your soul. The island had lush countrysides, sandy beaches, desert canyons, caves of crystals, jungles, and one time a yard was turned into an obstacle course. The railway had two towns. One had no name, and the other was called Chuggington. This railway was called Train World. What happened to Train World? stuttered James. It's very tragic. Two years ago, before the virus began, Train World was targeted by a man called Shelley, as well as a lot of other people. Some of these people had originated from World War II. They sent several engines to help with the war. They captured all the engines and gathered them at Trumpington. Then, it happened. <coughs> what happened? The island was bombed. War planes came in and started them. War planes came in and started throwing bombs, TNT, dynamite, fireworks, a nuke, and several pistols. They hit the engines, then they threw some fire sticks, and then BAM! Henry was shocked. He knew what that meant. The island sunk along with the remaining engines, cranes, and humans, and was never seen again. Some say that the engines that worked on that island still hug the other railway to this very day. They take certain engines, put them in one big spot while singing creepy songs, and then BAM! The engines remain very silent for the rest of the night. They had told some pretty scary stories from their lifetime, but they all agreed that Bill and Ben told the scariest story of all. Thank you.